it's Jessie V and in today's video I'm going to be talking about a very rare maybe cursed very disturbing Dr. Seuss book because Slender Man is actually in the book and Slender Man and Dr. Seuss is a very weird combination so we're gonna be talking about someone who actually found this book and what happened to them before I get started though I just want to say that this is my first video filming back where I have a niece for those of you who don't follow my vlog channel or our podcast my sister Mandy has had a baby which is so crazy to say right now so she's taking a break from the podcast she's gonna come back I think mid-February to tell her birth story but if you want to see a vlog that we've just posted sort of talking about the birth a little bit I'll link it down below it just went up so if you want to hear about Mandy and her baby yeah link down below another announcement is that we still have a handful of Valentine's Day mystery boxes left there are three golden tickets hidden somewhere amongst them because we're only doing a hundred of these boxes this year that means you have a higher chance at finding one which is really cool and these are honestly my favorite boxes yet my favorite item in our box is the tumbler this says always spread love Jesse V this is BPA free and it's just so Valentine's Day -y. I'm also wearing one of the necklaces that are in the box and yeah it's called our double love box because you get double of everything in the box so like two plushies two necklaces two candies it's really really cool so if you guys would like one before it sells out I have linked it down below and lastly I have two new schools that have started Yana groups which is amazing they are Holmes junior high and Kip all middle school so thank you guys so much for making a huge change in your school every time we get a new school on board I am just so so happy and if any of you guys would like to start a Yana group in your school just reach out to Yana at jessiev.com all right so without further ado let's get right into today's video Dr. Seuss is one of the most popular children's authors of all time. He's known for his rhyming sentences and unique illustrations. I think if you had to choose one word to describe his books, it would be whimsical. His books help children learn to read and usually have a deeper message embedded within them. And I grew up reading these books. So I feel like I have this like special connection to them, even though some of them actually scared me a little bit. Like that one book about the pants. I think I've talked about that one on here before. That one really scared me. And Slender Man is a supernatural character that originated as a creepypasta back in 2009. He is depicted as a thin, unnaturally tall humanoid with a featureless white head and face wearing a black suit. According to the legend, Slender Man can teleport and kidnap children. He enjoys stalking his targets, so it's best to stay out of any forested areas. Many sources say he actually lives in the Wisconsin National Forest specifically, and I was just in Wisconsin in September, so I should have gone. I want to meet Slender Man. So like I said, Dr. Seuss and Slender Man are obviously very, very different. One is like really happy and educational and bright and colorful. And the other one is very dark and creepy and even dangerous. So what would happen if the two were combined? You're about to find out because this takes a very bizarre turn of events. This story is called The Hidden Book. This story is about an eight year old girl named Martha and every single week she would go to her local library to take out some books. She enjoyed stories with bright and colorful illustrations, usually something with fantasy elements where characters go and visit other worlds. She just had this really huge imagination, which I love, and I feel like as you should when you're eight years old. Dr. Seuss was her favorite author, so she ran right over to his section in the library, but as she looked through her options, she realized that she had already read every single book that was on the shelf. She just couldn't find anything new, so obviously she was kind of disappointed. She wanted to read a brand new Dr. Seuss tale. Just as she had come to terms with the fact that she'd probably have to take some that she'd already read, she went to walk away and tripped over her shoelace, falling face first. She took a moment to compose herself and realized that she was able to see right underneath the bookshelves. It was dark and full of cobwebs and dust, but she did notice the silhouette of a book. So she reached her arm underneath the shelf as far as it could go, and she was eventually able to grab this unknown book and pull it out. She had to wipe all the dust from the cover, and she was shocked at what she saw. It was a Dr. Seuss book she had never seen before, and there was a tall, ominous character on the cover, and the title was Slendy Wants to Play a Game. So she of course went to check 
out the book and the librarian inspected it with a strange expression, saying she had never seen it before and that it wasn't coming up in their inventory. The librarian thought that maybe another child had like accidentally brought it there from home and left it, but regardless, she still let Martha bring it home with her. At bedtime, she had her father read her this story and this is how it went. In a world of whispers where shadows dance, lives a creature mysterious with a slender stance. With tentacles for arms and a face unseen, he roams through the forest, all tall and lean. His name is Slendy, a creature of lore, a figure in darkness forevermore. In a land of whimsy where colors play, Slendy's presence brings a night to day. One day in the woods where the tree stood tall, Slendy ventured out in his shadows to sprawl. He tiptoed through ferns with footsteps so light, his presence unnoticed, he stayed out of sight. He slinked through the forest with tentacles wiggling in search of some friends for a bit of giggling. He found a group of creatures, all shapes and sizes, with fuzzy fur and curious eyes. Hello there, dear friends, Slendy declared, his voice like a whisper in the cool, crisp air. The woodland creatures, they stopped and stared at the tall, shadowy figure who suddenly cared. Would you like to play a game with me? Slendy asked, as friendly as could be. The creature hesitated, then one brave hare stepped forward and said, we'd love to share. So off they went in the twilight's glow, playing hide and seek with Slendy in tow. He hid in the shadows, a master of disguise, while the woodland creatures closed their eyes. Through the trees and under the moon's soft light, they played until the stars were shining bright. Slendy chuckled softly, a sound like the breeze, as the creatures danced with such joyful ease. In the end, they realized, despite his eerie air, Slendy was a friend, so rare and so rare. He may be tall with shadows to lend, but deep down inside, he just wanted a friend. And so in the heart of the enchanted wood, Slendy found friendship and it felt so good. The moral you see in this whimsical tale is that true friends come in every shape and scale. So wow. It was a seemingly happy story, which is quite surprising, but Martha wouldn't have known any difference. She was too young to know who Slenderman actually was. But the father, however, knew that something felt very familiar, but he couldn't put his finger on where he might have heard about this Slendy before. He just felt this ominous feeling like the story was too happy, something was off. Martha was woken in the middle of the night to tapping on her window. Hello? She called, wondering who it could be. And there was this low, sing-songy voice that answered her from outside. Hello, dear friend. Would you like to play a game with me? Martha wasn't afraid because she knew about Slendy. She knew that he was caring and friendly and ultimately just wanted to find a friend. She knew he was the character from the Dr. Seuss books that liked to be around fuzzy, cute animals. But little did she know that that's actually what he wanted her to believe. That's why he created the book in the first place. Place, so kids would put their trust in him when he came calling. So she crawled out of bed and opened the window, climbing into the cold of the night to find him. And that is how this story ends. And I am so disturbed right now because as I read the Dr. Seuss version of him, I'm like, oh my gosh, he's so cute. He's actually friendly. We had him wrong the whole time. No. That's what he wants you to think. So there is a legend that says that if you go to your local library and find the Dr. Seuss section, try looking under the shelf because that's where he likes to hide his story. So we do of course have a local library here. We might go and do this on the vlog channel. Anyways, the guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget if you would like a Valentine's Day mystery box before they sell out, I have linked it down below. And if you wanna hear a little bit about Mandy having a baby, I'll link that vlog down below as well. But I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!